Uh, one of the terms you were using earlier on, Andrew, was uh, this term biodiversity, which um, a lot of people won't be familiar with that. Could you maybe just break that down and, uh, and in the context of your understanding of the forest, which you elaborated on earlier on, um, what, is, what is biodiversity? What does that look like? What does it mean? Um, well, simply bio means life and diversity is a variety. Yeah. So it's a variety of life forms, okay. you could say. Yeah. And um, of organisms and um, it would, you know, between plants, insects, birds, um, mammals, but basically all of the other life forms that are in, a ha in, a, so not in, a, in not our environment. Not just the trees. So when not we're just the, at the trees are, are one component yeah. of biodiversity. Yeah. However, the trees are the key, yeah, key okay. component, as I said. This type of ancient woodland yeah. is the most valuable land-based habitat yeah. for biodiversity. Yeah. And why do you, why do that, you say that? That the means key? that there is far more biodiversity packed into every yeah. square metre of this type of habitat. Okay. than any other type of habitat. Okay. So lots more now the reason for that is that we have four layers. You have a, you have a field layer, right. a, um, or sorry, a ground layer, a field layer. The ground layer is the soil, okay. the microorganisms living in the soil, yeah. little kind of mosses and ivy. Yeah, which there's lots of around. Lots of around, some around ferns. The and then the next layer up, you have the brambles, you have yeah. the hair robert, you have the wood sorrel, the wood anemone. Yeah. You have these, this herb layer, yeah. and the next layer up is the shrub layer. We have yeah. the, the hollies, we have the right, hazel, the we hazel. have the rowans. And the fourth layer is the canopy layer, which yeah. is up in the canopy. We hear the hum of the insects that are yeah. all operating at different layers between the canopy and the shrub okay. and the, the field layer. Yeah. And what it's saying is th these, it's like a three-dimensional box mm. with, with niches. There are niches for all these different life forms, so that they're not competing with each other for the same. So food they have their source. own little. little they have their own level. Area. It's like an apartment yeah. complex. Okay. For all different types of life. Yeah. Right. It's like multicultural. Yeah. Uh, community. They all occupy their all own occupy space. All occupy little kind of niches, together, but they're, yet they're working together. Yeah. None of them taken from each other. The only competition in here is for light. Yeah. You know, and as you can see, the, the, everything, there's enough light coming, th filtering through the oaks, the canopy, yeah. allows light to share with all the rest of the community. Okay, so... So cooperation obviously is... Is the main... Main thing, rather than we conventionally... Competition Biologists told, talk yes. about competition, competition. We've been misled. The fittest, nature, red in tooth and claw, and all these kind of negative comments towards nature. No. But what you're saying is actually... Comp Cooperation, cooperation is, is, is more common in nature than competition. Okay. And it's okay. something ecology, the new science of ecology, the studies, the research, is proving, has proven, yeah. but it hasn't filtered down into mainstream thinking. Yeah. Uh, corporations and capitalism and industrial forestry being part of that system yeah. have hijacked this competition, or they, have they, promoted they control competition. control the language as well, of course. Well, have promoted know. competition over cooperation because it's in their interests. Yeah. They're and narrow, it's in their self-interest. Yeah, narrow self-interest. So just compare one acre yeah. of this rich forest habitat yeah. with one acre of a tree farm plantation. Okay. In, in this one acre site, you will have four tons of bacteria. You will have one and a half tons of fungi. This is down in deep, in, what in we're the standing soil, in, in the, the soil. soil. Like, yeah, under the ground. Under the ground. Yeah. Um, 340 pounds of protozoa again they'd be in this they'd be microorganisms yeah you would have um it was a 90 but 90 pounds of slugs and snails 50 right. pounds of spiders right and nine pounds of beetles we found a beautiful bark um, yeah shieldback beetle was that on my arm yeah that's all of these are built from carbon so that in one acre you have this abundance of, of life and, and again we're just highlighting the main yeah yeah, absolutely. Life yeah. forms. There's yeah. a lot more than that. Yeah. Like 280 insects associated with yeah. the oak tree. Yeah, mosses and lichens. And then mosses, and lichens, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so, in comparison, one acre of plantation of is, is poor in comparison yeah. in terms of the biodiversity. And when we talk about the carbon lockup, as I say, the carbon lockup is in the beetles, is in the fungi. All of this yeah. is made of carbon. And in a system like this, when it's well managed, that carbon or, the, or the, the nutrients that are 
constantly being recycled in here yeah. are passing through all the different levels of life from plants to invertebrates to uh, birds back mammals eat you know birds fall die mammals um, again die off back to plants again yeah you've got this complete cycle yeah of recycling so, kind of a so nothing system. it's a closed system yeah. nothing is wasted nothing is lost yet every year there's more carbon the trees lock up there's more wood right. it keeps growing if it's managed well the trees will live longer locking up more carbon a hazel tree left to its own devices will live in good conditions to 90 with man coppicing it can live to 500 years wow. so you're okay. locking up far more carbon you're getting far more benefits so from a kind of a global warming climate yeah, change yeah. point coppicing of view, is is the way yeah. to extract and, sti and still having the benefits still locally, have the benefits of, of the same the benefits. same area of woodland coppice will increase exponentially its amount of uh, material over in, into the future right and actually, and actually become more more enriched. More like. enriched, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's phenomenal. Like an oak tree was discovered. We know this again in the 18th century studies into research into oak, because oak was, um, it was a commodity, a serious commodity for shipbuilding, yeah. etc. Like steel of the day. Yeah. Um, it was discovered that at 60 years of age, an oak every 20 years after, every 20 years, once it gets to 60, hmm. it doubles the amount of timber. Okay. Okay. Because it's growing in the round. Yeah. So the volume, as I say, of timber doubles. Nothing else we know of can provide that kind of abundance. Yeah. So the argument again that some uh, some species longer term vision is um, will provide for more treasure in the future. Yeah. A more so it's about thinking more real term. wealth. It's, it's yeah. about long term thinking. Sustainable forest management is about thinking in tree time. Trees yeah. are the longest living organisms. Mm. The largest organisms also, the most successful life forms on earth, mm. um, they can live for thousands of years. Yeah. So we need that mindset. This is a society that has evolved over thousands of years. This yeah. perfect closed system is an example for us to build community. We, we have, haven't got anywhere near yeah. a sophisticated system that caters for all the needs of a diverse Structure and society. And all the species here, their needs are being met. They're all being met. Yeah. They're all being met, and nobody is, nothing is um, suffering. Yeah. There's no quarries. Nothing is. Yeah. Resources are not being stolen yeah. from anywhere. Go back to our plantation, to our tree farm. All the same trees with the same root systems are competing for the same minerals and nutrients. They're competing with each other. Yeah. They're, they're cannibalizing each other. That's why they need fertilizer. They need chemical application, right. which costs money. Chemicals are made by petrochemical industry. Yeah. And obviously runoff. Runoff like fuel, they're producing carbon dioxide. There's CO2 produced in the production of fertilizers. That's not being factored into yeah. sustainable yeah. forest management of yeah. plantations. And harvesting goes a huge They, they need herbicides process. because they're all clones of each other. <coughs> they're all cuttings from a mother tree. They don't have immune systems. All these trees, every one of them, is connected by the fungi, mycorrhizae. Yeah. They're all getting their nutrients, minerals, medicines, all their needs met, yeah. shared by this distribution system yeah. that doesn't require fertilizers, doesn't require herbicides or chemical, okay? The, like I say, it's a, it's a much richer, self-contained, uh, amazing system. And more resilient because of the far more resilient, genetic diversity. Far more well. resilient to the threats posed by climate change and disease coming in. Uh, which is getting more and more. So we need more of these habitats and environments. And it, the way it is, we have, we're looking like faced, being faced with less.